Hi guys, my name is Ian, and I'm one of the founding team members at Merkle Science. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for supporting Merkle Science uh, and for being one of our valuable partners. Here at Merkle Science, we are committed to delivering you know, the best software that can help detect, prevent, and investigate the illicit use of cryptocurrencies. And with that in mind, we're constantly looking to improve upon our platform to deliver you better technology and services. And that brings us to our video today. Today, I'd like to introduce you guys to one of the newest features that we have that's about to go live shortly. This feature is called multi-hop analysis. And let me walk you guys through how this is going to impact you. So when I talk about multi-hop analysis, what we're really referring to is the ability to screen beyond the first layer of where transactions are coming in from. As you guys are probably aware, one of the great things about blockchain is that it provides us with total transparency to see where transactions are coming from. What that means is, given address A, not only can we see all the funds going into address A from let's say address B, but the transparent nature of blockchain means that we can also see what are the funds that are going into address B, what are the funds that are going into address C that then sends funds into address B that then sends funds into address A and so on and so forth. And with our latest release, you'll actually be able to customize how you wanna detect risk at multiple hops. And let me walk you guys through how it's gonna work. So multi-hop impacts the platform in a couple of different ways. And the first way it does so is through the implementation of our risk policies. So as you guys are aware, risk policy allows you to create custom policies with custom rules inside that detects different types of risk. Now, multi-hop analysis is gonna primarily impact the first category of policy that we have, which is termed source of funds. So allow me to go into one of the source of funds policy and explain. Now, when you go into the source of funds policy, you do have the option of not just looking at existing alerts, um, modifying existing alerts, but more importantly, you can also create new rules, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click add rule. Now the beauty about our rule engine is that it's highly customizable, which means that you as the user can actually decide what you want the rule name to be, what the risk level assigned to it, as well as what are the conditions that must be satisfied for this rule to trigger. So for example, I could create a rule today that says direct it from darknets. I can assign this a risk level of let's say high and once I've done so all I need to do is create a condition right and over here I'm going to choose the first condition that says if an address has directly received funds from darknets of let's say ten dollars and a one percent taint right as easy as this if I click save rule I now have a rule that can pick up on direct deposits into addresses that I'm screening coming from darknets. Now, this is typically how the rule has been deployed today, but let me explain how multi-hop is gonna affect this. With the implementation of our new release, you will now have a new category of rules that looks at what we call indirect risk, right? So the first three options are options that look at direct, and the last three options are options that look at indirect. So what I, that means is to say, I can now create a rule that says, if an address has indirectly received funds from darknet of again, let's say a $10 and a threshold and 1% taint. Now, why is this important? This is important because whether or not risk is detected at one, two, three, or four hops can be very different when it comes to assessing the risk. And what we've realized is that, you know, different businesses have different ways of categorizing risk at different layers. And we wanted to create a system that would reflect this information intuitively to you as a user in a way that saves you valuable time. And so how you could go about doing this is you might want to create a set of rules that looks at direct deposits, give it an appropriate name, right? And because it's a direct deposit, you know, the risk level may be high. But similarly, you may want to create another set of rules that this time looks at indirect deposits. And give it a different name 
where instead of naming it direct deposits, now I'm going to call it indirect deposits. <clears throat> and importantly as well, I'm going to adjust the risk level to medium because, you know, to me, perhaps, indirect deposits from Darknet where they are at a two degree or further, I don't want to classify that as high risk, the same as direct deposits, right? And by giving it a unique name like indirect deposits, what that also means is that when it actually flags, the alert that Merkle Science will return you <clears throat> will clearly identify it to be indirect. So even before you know going into the address, just by looking at the alert's name, you already know, you know where this alert was detected, direct or indirect. Now, the second way that this new release is going to impact you is on an address level. So on the address page, you have a list of all the addresses that we're monitoring. And if I were to click on any one of these addresses and go in, and I were to scroll down, you will notice that the pie chart that was previously shown now looks a little bit different. Previously, the version of the platform only had one pie chart, right? I had, I mean, sorry, a pie chart with one layer. And that one layer simply reflected risks that were direct, right? So one hop going in. With this new release, our pie chart will now have two layers where the inner layer represents direct risk and the outer layer represents indirect risk and indirect up to five hops, right? And if you scroll down as well, you'll notice instead of separating out two different tables for, for deposits and withdrawals, we've decided to combine this into a single table titled counterparty summary where you'll be very quickly and easily be able to see all the entities that have interacted with the address in question, both directly and indirectly and in a respective amounts. Now, the final change that has come in with this new implementation refers to our investigation mode. So it's all good and well to be able to tell you that we've detected for your risk at an indirect level, but just telling you that may not be sufficient because again, if the risk is at a two degree, third degree, fourth degree, or fifth degree, that can be very different when it comes to risk assessment. And what we've realized is that it takes compliance officer a lot of time to actually identify at which juncture this risk was detected. And so the final change that has come in with this new implementation is under our investigation mode. Investigation mode now allows you to automatically map out all interactions that the address in question has had with other identified entities up to five hops, right? So if you're looking at the diagram in front of me, this black circle in the middle represents the address that we're screening. And the purple lines represent funds going in and the red lines represent funds going out. What this means is that just by looking at this diagram in front of me, I can very quickly map out the different pathways that the address in question was sending funds to entities like darknet marketplaces, right? So for example, if we look on the screen in front of me, we can see that the origin address not only sent funds directly into Blue Sky Marketplace, but it had also sent funds into another address which then routed funds into Blue Sky Marketplace. And the fact that we can see multiple pathways into Blue Sky Marketplace allows the, you as a user to very quickly say that perhaps the proximity between the address and Blue Sky Marketplace is much closer than it actually appears. So these are the three main changes that would come in um, with the release of MultiHub. Um, we hope that it will make your work easier and of course, you know, if you guys do encounter any issues or questions implementing or using MultiHop effectively, do reach out to your account manager assigned to you, and I'm sure they'd be more than happy to get on a call and walk you through this in a little bit more detail. Thank you.